Hi, I'm George Kay, and this is my father Niels. Hi. Welcome back to another episode of Father and Synthesizer. And today we have yet another very special thing for you. Today we're going to reveal the secret project we've been working on. Yes, uh, we've been working on this uh, project for the last two months, actually. Very complicated, very intricate. Yeah, very, very complicated project. And uh, without further ado, it is the Algorithm Drum Machine, drum computer. It's an algorithmic drum, uh, drum sound creator, I would say, that's the best description. Mm -hmm. Because you can uh, create sounds ranging from small and insignificant to massive and huge. It's polyphonic, so you can play multiple sounds at once. And it, I think it's the best drum machine out there in terms of sound design, because you can get really into the details. Although because of its limitations, which is the slower STM32, you can't uh, do these uh, edits as much in real time as one would maybe like to. But uh, without further ado, let me show you around the thing. Okay folks, what we have right here is the algorithm drum machine drum computer generative drum magic thing. And uh, let's check out some sounds. First, here's the bass drum that I created earlier. It's one of my favorite uh, kick drum bass drum sounds uh, of all time. I like how really smooth it is. And um, then let's check out a snare. It does sound very electronic, but I think that's the nature of the thing. It's not It's not meant to be an acoustic modeling, uh, modeling synthesizer. It's meant to be uh, interesting and electronic. So let's uh, check out a little beat. As you can hear, it's got velocity sensitivity on the hi-hats and uh, all the other instruments. And uh, let's add some bass to that from my modular synth. Now you've heard some basics from the algorithm. Now let's get into it. Let's get into the sound design. I'm going to ch choose another uh, snare because this is the main snare and this is a secondary snare. Let's select that by turning the encoder. Here we've got the acoustic snare, hand clap and electric snare. These names down here are the uh, descriptions of the MIDI sound, the MIDI file, the MIDI standard. Right, let's get into it by pressing this. And there we are in the snare algorithm. Each of these uh, colored knobs responds to a parameter in here. Let's check out the snare. Sounds a bit shit. Let's uh, move the envelope up a bit shorter. We've got two E's, two envelopes. And they go in uh, like a uh, curve that goes down and then a longer envelope. So you have a decay and a release, basically. Now let's, uh, let's move that a little. That's a bit better, maybe a little shorter still. I mean, that's okay, but uh, now we all we have is noise. What we need is some sound, basically the shell of the snare. And that we've got right here. And the uh, shell is basically an FM algorithm made from square waves. So it's a two operator FM. We have the carrier frequency and the modulator frequency. And let's uh, set that up. Now that sounds interesting, doesn't it? Now we've also got some filters. We have a low pass filter here and a high pass filter here. And I feel like we've got a little bit uh, too much of a low end here. So let's turn that down a little. That sounds pretty cool. Now let's save that sound and by doing that I'm pre I will press the encoder down and hold it for a few seconds. Then we've got a splash uh, saying instrument save. And yeah the uh, screen is still a bit slow because this is all running on a single STM. Now let's uh, move on. Let's uh, check out the tom. We have a tom sound here. That's a low tom. Now let's select that. Let's add the second frequency. Uh, 
and this tom sound is generated with a bass drum algorithm. Now let's check out some other algorithms. Here we have another tom sound, that's mid tom B. Let's check that out. And there we have the FM algorithm. This is the algorithm that sparked our wavetable synthesizer FM. Yeah, that's definitely an FM sound. And we have a bunch of other interesting algorithms in here, but you're gonna have to uh, try them out yourselves. Okay, now that you've heard what this uh, thing can do and how it sounds and what it does, let's talk about how we made it and why we made it. Right, the idea came when we were working on the sample player. I was, which we have uh, showed off before. Yeah, I was really disappointed that you can't get all the samples into the little blue pill computer. The memory is just not sufficient enough. And then I remember that we've been working on the um, another project we've been showing you, the, the R110 clone. Yeah, the drums on my uh, live modular rig, the completely analog, uh, analog yeah, rig. analog. So the idea was why, if, if you have the analog part of, of a drum simulation, it should be simple enough to do the same thing in mathematics. Now the idea was born of an algorithmic drum. We um, started with a very basic algorithm, the, uh, the, the kick drum. Yeah, the bass drum sound. That's uh, probably the first sound that I showed you. It was, a, it was a huge moment when the first sound, the first kick sound came out of the speakers. Uh, totally and absolutely con generated by mathematics. So, yeah, completely digital. It wasn't uh, a massive analog PCB. It was just, I think we were using the, um, the function generator board for that still. Yeah, yeah. So it, it just consists of two sinus oscillators and um, the correct um, envelope. It's, it's very basic, but huge. That was basically the inspiration for the sound creation. And then we went on further to uh, Sound on Sound to, uh, and we read a lot of articles on there by the sound on sound explanations of how those drums and how those sounds were made. Mm. And of course, listening to uh, real kick drums and real snare drums and basically being, being inspired by all the sounds around us. Yeah. For example, um, the snare drum, I tried to reproduce what, what we did on the analog version. Which and is just basically white noise with an envelope. And it didn't work well, very it well. It sounded like a wet fart. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> now um, then I read the article on Sound on Sound uh, about how do you produce a snare drum on an analog synthesizer and at the very end of that article they were showing a very simple approach to do this which was use an FM uh, sound for the shell and white noise for the snare, which is the, the snare effect. which is the small metal thing on the bottom uh, on the bottom drum head, which uh, resonates and hits yeah. the drum head to make that snare sound. And uh, so we tried that, and wow, beautiful! Immediately got much better uh, results with the same envelope as we had on the yeah. wet fart sound snare, <laughs> which is still in there if you turn off the uh, if you, if you turn off the FM shell. Because first we had tried doing the shell with a low-pass filter resonator and that, that, uh, that just isn't, didn't work. To generate the bell type sounds we needed to have FM sound generation and uh, that was something we struggled for quite a while. That, with. Was, uh, that was the most complicated part yeah, of the whole uh, yeah, machine yeah. I believe. It took us the longest for sure. Yeah, but we came up with a very nice algorithm for that and uh, as a byproduct we introduced, uh, as you have seen in our last video, we introduced the FM capabilities to our wavetable synthesizer. Yeah, because we had spent so much time on that algorithm, we basically just copy-pasted it onto the <laughs> wavetable synthesizer <laughs> right. to make it polyphonically and melodical yeah. instead of percussive. One thing, um, our algorithmic uh, drum module does have an EEPROM memory, so yeah. uh, all the, the drum sets you develop your on your own and save 
they are saved in this little EE prompt. Which means if you reprogram and update the firmware or write something of your own, the settings and your drum sounds will still be saved. That was a huge uh, leap forward for us as well to finally incorporate EE prompt storage into mm -hmm. our module. Right. Which we're going to have on all modules in the future, I believe. Yeah. Just just for basic things like saving the MIDI channel and step lengths and sequences and things like that. Yeah. Plus, if for some reason your blue pill might die, which did not happen yet to us, except, except when, when I, you fried it. <laughs> but I you fried. never know. There might be a short somewhere in your system, uh, lightning strike. Yeah. Because you can replace the blue pill module very easily. And uh, this way, because the settings are stored externally, you don't lose your settings. And uh, please keep in mind that for now this is an alpha version. There's still quite a lot of bugs. For example, today I found out that you can't actually have more than one set, but we'll be fixing that sometime in the next couple of weeks. And for now it's st it still works beautifully as a sound generation tool. And eventually we want to introduce some forms of randomness and generativeness into this, which is why we have the CV and trigger inputs. And uh, of course we are looking forward to your comments and suggestions for future modules maybe or uh, if you have any feedback on the current modules and we are so happy to hear that some of you have started building our modules and of course we'll be uh, there every step along the way if you need any help at all just send us a message on the website you have a contact form there that goes directly into my email inbox so you can just uh, if you need help just say so and we'll do what we can. We try to help as good as we can, yes. Yes, maybe you've noticed, but uh, we're using a new camera today, so if uh, everything worked, you'll have nice picture quality, and if it didn't, and we're using the backup phone camera again, then uh, we'll be staring off into the distance while you're looking at the screen. And uh, thank you so much for watching. Please check out my Instagram if you want to see our synths in action and uh, our website of course as well where you can find all of our modules and some instructions and uh, thank you so much for watching we hope to see you again in two weeks and remember stay, stay curious, curious.